Hey there, Bridget and Emily. Last week, I forgot to mention something in my video that I'm really rather annoyed about. You see, 67 years ago on July 16th, a breakthrough was made in geopolitical relations. You see, a test was carried out for a device which has effectively guaranteed peace between first world countries for the last 60-some years. And that is through means of absolute destruction. Wait, that can't possibly be right. Well, it is. For those of you who don't know, what I'm referring to is a Trinity test, which represented the first successful detonation of a nuclear device ever. And for the last 60 years or so, humanity has had the potential through using nuclear weapons to actually destroy itself. And yet, surprisingly, it hasn't. This is why the nuclear weapons can be looked at as the world's greatest peacemakers ever. But how can this be? Well, allow me to explain. You see, throughout human history, people have followed the principles of economics, even though they don't really know what they're doing. Economics thus predicts what they're going to do and for why they're going to do it. Conflicts are no different. Conflicts originate out of economic principles most of the time. You see, governments usually fund wars because they felt that they could have an economic benefit from winning, or some kind of benefit. This usually involves trading routes, resources, or even just land in general. And most wars were founded on this principle, that by going to war, a country, like an individual, could increase their utility. Now, I can understand why you might not believe me after World War I, World War II, and the Cold War, etc., but let me give you a few examples. These would be the Boer War, the Seven Years' War, the Anglo-Dutch War, the Napoleonic Wars, the Punic Wars, the Norman Conquest, etc. Most wars throughout human history were fought for economic reasons, not because of ideological reasons. From an economic perspective, though, nuclear weapons changed all that. It made it impossible to ever fight a war where benefits would exceed costs. You see, what happens when you use a nuclear weapon is not only do you destroy your enemy, you also destroy the infrastructure and resources which your enemy was sitting on while you attack them. This means that if you're trying to derive some sort of economic benefit from a war, it really makes absolutely no sense to use nuclear weapons, because nuclear weapons end up destroying the enemy and everything else around them. And if you do recover anything, it's most likely going to be too radioactive to use. Thus, it becomes impossible to actually fight a war for economic reasons because of nuclear weapons. Because if you have nuclear weapons, you can't use them. If the enemy has nuclear weapons, you can't attack them. Thus, cost will always exceed benefit. And thus, peace exists. What I haven't talked about yet, though, are wars where they're not fought for economic benefit. Wars in which the enemy is willing to fight to the death. In which case, nuclear weapons seem like the ideal solution because they simply kill all the enemies. However, this becomes a problem if you and your enemy both have nuclear weapons. Hence the Cold War. You see, during the Cold War what happened was that the United States was trying to defeat communism. However, the communists had nuclear weapons, but so did the United States. So each one tried to outflank the other and come up with new and innovative ways to kill the other so that they could effectively attack the United States or Soviet Union without the Soviet Union or the United States attacking the other and thus killing them both. You see, it kind of ends up becoming a duel, where if you blink, you die. However, if you feel that you've been shot, you shoot the other person too. So you're both dead. This means that from an ideological perspective, wars that are fought exclusively for ideology are almost pointless if that ideology involves staying alive. If you want to be alive at the end of the day, you don't use nuclear weapons. And thus, once again, peace is secured. You see, things are a bit different nowadays, though. Countries no longer need to be first world countries in order to develop nuclear weapons. This is evident by countries like Pakistan managed to procuring them. Pakistan is really still a very impoverished country and yet has nuclear weapons. And the greatest fear today is actually that ideological groups and ideological extremists will use them. They do not fear becoming martyrs so long as they can take down or injure a country that they feel has wronged them. Al-Qaeda would be a good example but they never got nuclear weapons, although it has been shown that they were interested in doing so. So really, the interesting part is that really only now the fears of the nuclear age that were first envisioned by Robert Oppenheimer and the other scientists at the Los Alamos Project are only now coming to pass. And it, that it really isn't a country that we have to worry about using them, but rather ideological extremists. Well, anyway, with that sunny thought, I will leave, and I will see you, Bridget, on Monday. See ya!